Audrey's to bed. I'm just too tired. Ugh. Ow. This thing is less pillow, more shedding duck. Or turkey. Hey there, it's Carrie at Ink Kill Revival. I just have one question for you today. How is it November? Well, somehow I moved past denial and I am straight into Thanksgiving crafting. Today, we're going to be making this monumental paper crafting project. It's a level up from a card. There is a ton of gold embossing and die cutting but I have some tricks to share with you that will make you an embossing machine. <laughs> so let's do it. We have 50 feathers to make, so we're just gonna jump straight into the embossing. Pull out that misty. Tip number one. I'm gonna remove the background foam from within the misty so that I can mount my thicker cling stamp and have enough space for it. I'm stamping on some Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock, and I'll be using Impression Obsession's Snowy Background. Now, I like this cling stamp because it looks great for Christmas snow, and also it looks like confetti or dots, and on these feathers, we're going for the dot look. I'll be embossing it, so I'm using Versamark ink to give the embossing powder something sticky to stick to. Although, embossing powder does not need stickiness to stick, right? It likes to stick everywhere. For each one of these background stamps, I'm double stamping. I just want to be sure to have fantastic coverage. On to embossing tip number two. I've just stamped the first background and set it aside. It's just sitting over there with the stinky ink. Stinky ink, sticky ink. <laughs> and I'm moving on to my second background. I'm gonna do double stamping on this second background again, and then I'll coat those two backgrounds with the gold embossing powder at the same time. Embossing tip number three. Have your embossing powder in... <laughs> oh, there's my filmer. Let me just give a shout out to my wonderful husband who takes all the B-roll video to make these a little more fun and exciting to watch. But as I was saying, embossing tip number three, have your embossing powder in some type of large container. Although if you're anything like me, you might want a paper under that container still. I spill like crazy. Doing the same to the second background now. And once I have that powder on here, I will just be setting this background aside as well. That's tip number four. Save up all of your backgrounds with the dry embossing powder on them and heat emboss them one right after the other. But be so careful not to knock that powder off in the meantime. I'm also using the Simon Says Stamp Lattice Grid Stamp for some more of my embossed backgrounds. Check it out, I'm improvising. <laughs> that tiny little spoon was driving me crazy and I don't have a big scoop, but I do have this scraper. I'm moving on to the third type of feather, and these are dipped tip feathers. So I'm just running my Versamark ink pad along one edge of my paper. And all these background papers have been four and a quarter by five and a half inch. Things are getting crazy around here. I am getting ready to cover this entire background in Versamark ink because I want to have a solid gold feather. Sounds fancy, right? It's finally time to melt all of our embossing powder sheets. And you know what? Every single one of them made it. Watching embossing powder melt is so mesmerizing. Remember I used embossing powder for the very first time when I was 10 or 11? I just thought it was absolutely magical. It still kind of is. What are we doing stamping again? 
Well, check this out. I want to stamp on the back side of some of these background pages. That's because as the feathers twist and turn on the mobile, I want there to just be more stamping always showing. Now, I won't be stamping the back side of the lattice or the solid embossed paper because I actually plan to write some things that we as a family are grateful for on the back of this mobile. And those two styles, and it just wouldn't work to write on if they were stamped. Now just a small word of advice. You may have noticed that that snowy background stamp does not quite fill the whole sheet. Before you go to stamp the back side of it, trim off the unstamped edge. This will make it so your stamping on the front and the back side line up, unlike mine. I am a total paper manufacturing company over here. Fairly inefficient, but really satisfying kind of what handmade's all about. In the end, I made three of each type, except for the lattice, I just did two. Getting ready to cut 50 feathers here. I'm using these Spellbinders Shape Abilities Feather Etch Dies. It's great because I have a pack of six, so that is going to save me lots of time cutting. Hey, so this is the time that you want to get real comfortable. Pull out an audiobook or a podcast or turn on that TV. Just relax and cut. It's curling feather time. I'm using my Teflon bone folder and sliding it along the back side of the feather with some pressure, just right there at the tip. I wish it was this easy to curl my hair. My hair cannot hold curl. The very last feather. I've cut myself a fairly long strand of Recollections Gold Baker's Twine, and I'm now threading it through the eye of a needle. We've officially moved on to the next stage of this mobile, and this is entering the sewing realm. So I'm sorry you have to watch me because I do not sew. So let me walk you through the process here and then you can go and do it better than me. I've taken the next feather and I'm placing it face up. I'll poke the needle through, and I'm using a mouse pad underneath here to take the brunt of that needle. And I thread the baker's twine all the way through. I'm gonna space the feathers apart so that they're almost touching. Now on the back side, I will tie a knot. And this is where you will shine far above me. <laughs> I've got five strands to go on this. I want to do one for each family member. So I've planned out that some of the strands will be longer and shorter and I've laid out my feathers in a way that gives a variety in shape of feather and embossed pattern. All the strands are strung and I'm ready to get them tied onto my dowel. I'm using a 15 inch dowel here. Well, it's been cut to 15 inches. And I am taking the top portion of my string and wrapping it around three times before tying a knot. Now that's actually a key point to note that I didn't mention before. When you are threading your very first feather onto your strand, leave a good length of twine so that you can wrap and tie. With my center strand in place, I know where to now attach my next strands and get everything spaced out evenly. You can see I have my plan right there that shows which strand goes where for the long and the short. With all the strands attached, I'm ready to prepare the hanging portion of the mobile. So I've laid it out so I can get a feel for how tall it will sit. 
and then I am giving myself some extra twine on both sides, actually plenty of extra because this time I want to wrap it six times around. We are on the final stretch here. I'm pulling out my die cut machine again and using some W plus nine Whimsy Alpha dies. I'm also using that final sheet of gold embossed paper. And I'm making these letters because I want to use them as sort of an end cap to each of the feather strands. So these are the initials of all of my family members. As always, I'm using my Lawn Fun glue tube and using that to just sandwich these two pieces together. While I'm gluing these, let me tell you about my plan for this feather mobile. So I thought it would be fun to have a beautiful decoration that has some meaning behind it. So like I said, each family member will get one of these strands. They've got their initial at the end of it and they'll get to write whatever they're grateful for on the back of all their feathers. Now I think I'm gonna have us use a Tombow marker, number 992. It's just a light taupe that it won't show up too much, so it still has a nice, clean, aesthetic look, but we still have everybody's gratitude feathers. Now a tough part was I had to decide who I'd have the long strand and who got stuck with the short strand. Or maybe I should say who got stuck with the long strand. So I got stuck with the long strand and I gave my baby the short strand. So I've got my work cut out for me in being grateful. But Audrey's got lots of wonderful things she's grateful for, like baby shark and googly eyes. Those things always end up in her mouth. And dancing. I hope you're able to enjoy making this project. I know you'll be grateful when you finish. <laughs> You'll have a beautiful piece to share and a memory to create with your family. Hope you're able to express some gratitude this season, despite what a tough year it's been. There's still so much good. Pop over to inkhillrevival.com for a complete supply list and enjoy. I'm so glad you hung out with me today. <laughs>